Welcome back. Have you wondered how a Lean Six Sigma project is selected? How does it come into existence? What are the ways in which we can identify an improvement project? In the lesson on roles and responsibilities we saw that top leadership drives improvement in the organization. But how do they decide the course of action? In this chapter we are going to learn about establishing a structured approach for project selection, building a business case and project charter for the selected project. To identify potential improvement areas, the executive leadership may drive a gap analysis by mapping organizational capabilities with the deliverables. Employees also suggest areas of improvements with respect to time, quality, scope and how difficult it is to meet the objectives. Once gaps are collected, the project champion digs out further information, clarifies and refines objective based on the findings and facts. A very important thing here is that this data should be stored carefully and should also be fully understood. If not, it may cause the team go off track later. To select a methodology for an improvement project, we can make use of this flower chart. As we can see the DMAKE methodology is used when solution is not known and improvement is required in existing process output. DFSS is used when improvement solution is required for a new process output. DM or DV and Lean are the methodologies which improve processes. In case an optimized process has to be designed, we make use of DM or DV, while if we have to improve existing process, we apply Lean. We must note here that DFSS and DM or DV are essentially the same. There may be scenarios when we know what is the best solution, in such cases we can make use of project management methodologies to implement solution and bring improvements. Project Charter is a document that captures problem statement, goal statement, scope, milestone, roles and responsibilities etc. in the problem statement. We highlight the problem that is, the difference between actual state and the desired state of affairs. While writing problem statement, we should get the answers to question like, how long the problem has existed, what is the impact of it, where is the problem occurring? A problem statement should not suggest the causes or the solutions. In our case study of Alex the Carpenter, we have seen the example of problem statement. Let us see that here again. In this example, we can see that the above three questions are answered. Once the problem statement is written down, we need to establish a goal statement. A goal statement puts forward the ideal state of affairs with respect to the details and measurement that are identified in problem statement. A goal statement should be in sync with the problem statement. We must make sure that the goal statement is smart. This means it should be specific and not generalized version, it should be measurable as that will help in assessing the implementation, it should be actionable, relevant and there should be, a time limit attached. While writing a goal statement, we should keep in mind that it should start with a verb, there should be some numeric objective attached, and it should have a deadline. In this example, reduce the lead time to deliver comfy chairs within 10 days within next 3 months. We can see that these 3 points are getting addressed. A business case is a compelling case why a project is required. It should clearly state how the project is going to help an organization in meeting the objectives. Here is the example from the case study. While defining the project scope, we make use of CPOC analysis. A project scope states what all is in the boundaries of the project and what all is beyond. It also helps in making roles and responsibilities more clear. Usually, project scope is set by champion. To identify all relevant elements of a process improvement project before work begins, the team makes use of SIPOC diagram. SIPOC analysis summarizes the inputs and outputs of each process step in a tabular format. To do a SIPOC analysis, we should have a high-level process flower chart with definite start and end points. For each process step we should find out the outputs and respective customers to whom the process impacts. Then. Those who provide or supply inputs should be identified along with the inputs that they supply. Usually the high-level process consists of 7 to 8 steps as they exist on date. Understanding and being able to define project scope will give you a focus and sense of purpose when executing the project. 
Other elements in a project charter should be deliverables, assumptions, SWOT analysis, stakeholder analysis, roles and responsibilities, financial savings etc. Schedule and deliverable planning is also very important. We should not choose any arbitrary project date as it may lead to the project schedule not being followed and it won't have any use then. It is therefore important that the project schedule be created by a senior person on the team like a project champion, a project lead or someone with a similar level of authority. Here is the information that should be considered while scheduling, historical Six Sigma information. It usually happens that many similar projects have been undertaken in the past. If the documented information is available about the learning and time taken in completion, it should be referred to before deciding the project schedule. Constraints. Most of the time, a project has to run in absence of some resources, or some resources are required late or project has to convince the management about the value of resources. Such constraints should be identified beforehand and should be considered while planning and scheduling. Assumptions. There happen to be cases where training is given to newer members to carry out Six Sigma project tasks. Expecting them to be well versed immediately after training without any hands on experience is also an unrealistic expectation. So, schedule must address these kind of assumptions properly. Risks The risks assessment provides a good estimate about the cases where a project is likely to suffer. So, before arriving at a schedule, risk assessment should be done meticulously. When we do scheduling, it should have at least the end dates for five phases and their phase end or toll gate reviews. Deliverables and what value do they provide should also be identified and documented. We need to have well-defined team with allocated responsibilities. Six Sigma projects are usually started by one person who sees the opportunity and therefore champions the project. In the beginning there may be one or two people who are working on the elementary documents like scope, financial benefits plan etc. Then later on team expands, and other roles also come in picture. Actual practitioners are also given basic training and they help in data collection, giving improvement suggestions and implementing solutions. Here is a template of project charter that is available in the tool Sigma Excel, that we provide as a complementary tool, to our Green Belt course participants opting for professional or premium training. It is also available for one month trial on their website. It's activity time now. Here is the case, your cafe. Coffee Cravings has a good customer base in the town. On an average, they host around 200 customers on daily basis. Since last few months you have found that customer service time has gone up. The customer has to wait and at time there are queues. Now, you want to improve the situation by reducing the waiting time. Create a business case and project charter using the above information and the data given below. Problem since last two months. Current average wait time 15 minutes, desired wait time 5 minutes. You may create a full project charter, or just the elements which have been discussed in this lesson. Now we understand how a project is selected, what is the criteria for choosing a particular methodology, and we have also gone through the various elements of a project charter. Along with this video, the supplementary reading will learn more about the process elements and benchmarking. After that, we have the lesson on how to develop project metrics. Here we come to an end to this lesson. Should you need any support, feel free to contact us. Thanks for watching this video, and see you in the next lesson.